Sugar is not healthy. Hey, Coca Cola, it's me, LeBron James. Oh, yeah. My skin is having an episode because I've been eating sugar. Playboy left out at age five, and it's affected almost every choice mm. I made for the rest of my life. Mm. I believe sex addiction is a real thing because I've experienced it. And I think pornography, I mean, there's sort of serious scientific evidence around the, what um, pornography does to the brain. Which is more addictive for you? A slice of chocolate cake or an hour on Pornhub? Today, we're exploring the neuroscience of addiction, whether sugar is an addictive drug and the even more controversial porn addiction. Here's what I found. I have four questions for you. Is sugar actually addictive, like a drug? Is porn addiction real, or just social media hype? Is porn or sugar more addictive? And which is worse for you? First up, sugar. Whether you're snacking on chocolate or carby snacks, there's more to your craving than you might realize. Look at the ingredients label of different food items and pay attention to the grams of sugar. Even for supposedly healthier items, you might be shocked by how much sugar is found in the modern diet. For example, sugar is often added to so-called healthy or weight loss foods that have reduced fat to make them taste better. These days, you don't eat the whole sugar cane, you eat the product of a refining process which, just like refining cocaine, enhances its addictive potential. Right, so that's four apples. That's the sugar from four apples in one glass. Now one apple is about four teaspoons of sugar, so that's 16 teaspoons of sugar in that glass. It's not just the pure refined sugar being added to food and drink either. The same refinement of sugar happens when you drink apple juice instead of a whole apple. While sugar isn't normally considered a drug like cocaine, it is a substance we consume, meaning we can compare it using the same criteria we might use for typical addictive substance abuse. Physical dependence, risky use, social problems and impaired control. Sugar acts similarly to cocaine or opioids, more than meeting the requirements of an addictive substance. It will depend on personal and genetic differences, but there is a threshold of sugar that must be consumed over a few weeks that will lead to neurochemical changes in your brain. It produces an intense release of dopamine and opioids in the brain, just like cocaine and morphine do, and this leads you to binge eat sugary food or carby foods to chase that feeling. It also affects your neurotransmitter receptors, just like drugs do. However, you can build up a tolerance, meaning you need to eat more and more to get the same effect. Conversely, that also makes your brain more sensitive to the absence of that dopamine reward. Going without sugar causes a strongly felt dopamine deficiency, a withdrawal. This dopamine deficiency can be felt as a mild depression or with ADHD-like symptoms such as hyperactivity, attention deficit, distraction, and reduced cognition. Likewise, consuming sugar and high-carb meals leads to a release of brain serotonin which makes you feel good, but over time leads to serotonin depletion and further dependence. The combination of serotonin and dopamine deficiency is part of why obesity is associated with depression and anxiety. The way that the brain adapts to long-term sugar consumption also reduces impulse control, making it harder for you to stop eating. No surprise we have an obesity epidemic. However, it also predisposes you to other addictions. Just like other addictive substances, sugar may act as a gateway drug, making it more likely that people will transfer their addiction over from sugar to much more harmful addictive substances. We know this happens in animals, and research in humans is still early days with mixed evidence. However, weight loss surgery patients that have high sugar diets and sugar addiction were shown to be the most likely to develop a new drug addiction after surgery. In fact, in animal studies, sugar made them more sensitive to drugs like cocaine. Isn't it wild that sugar is both an addictive substance, on par with drugs like cocaine, but could also be dialing up your sensitivity to addiction more generally? The social impacts and psychological harms, beyond what I've mentioned, of just sugar addiction are less obvious. Sugar addiction isn't likely to harm your personal relationships or stop you living your life normally beyond the downsides of gaining weight, having low energy, or having sugar crashes, for example. But excessive sugar consumption clearly has negative physical health effects, like diabetes, obesity, metabolic disease, and so on. Yet, despite this, people still consume sugar to excess. So yes, sugar is seriously addictive. Next up. Is porn actually addictive? We've seen how sugar is clearly an addictive substance, but research into porn addiction is still controversial, with experts debating how to approach it. New models are being theorized and tested. Porn isn't a substance, it's a behavior, meaning researchers have approached it similarly to video game addiction, social media addiction, sex addiction, and the more well-established gambling addiction. 
Often, porn addiction is treated as a manifestation of sex addiction. You might not know this, but porn obviously produces arousal and excitement, and usually involves masturbation and orgasm. During orgasm, brain regions associated with emotional processing become less active, leading to a brief trance-like state accompanied by the release of pleasure hormones like norepinephrine, dopamine, and serotonin. This can provide both a reward as well as an escape for negative feelings. Both substance and behavior addictions share a pattern of neurological changes and psychological motivations, and the underlying addictive mechanisms of porn use seem similar to addictive drugs. When scanned with an MRI, the brains of porn addicts are similar to drug addicts. Regular exposure to porn leads to changes in the brain's reward center, a hallmark of all addictions, and this is linked to a loss of control and compulsive use. Compulsive porn use can interfere with your working memory, the ability to retain information while performing a task similar to drugs. People who are addicted to porn demonstrate increased addictive mechanisms, including mood disturbance, cravings, loss of control, and spending too much time on porn, as well as tolerance to it, seeking more extreme porn to capture the same effects, withdrawal, and relapse behaviors. There are also links to ADHD, which we also see with other addictions, including sugar, by the way. So, porn clearly has addictive mechanisms, but how come we're not a world of porn-addled zombies? Up to 99% of men and 86% of women use porn, so there must be more to it, otherwise we'd be sounding the alarm for porn addiction, right? In one study, about 3-4% to of porn users had what was described as problematic porn use, porn addiction. From the scientific literature, it appears that it's not enough to engage in a potentially addictive behavior regularly in order to become addicted. Just look at video games and social media, for example. These are widespread, but very few people have an actual problem and go into withdrawal if they don't watch porn or play video games. So what's going on? People using porn can be split into different profiles. Normal people, using porn for fun or out of curiosity. People who are not addicted, but are at risk of their porn use becoming problematic. And then the addicts. People can shift between these profiles as their circumstances, behaviors, and mental health change. To be at risk, you need to be predisposed to addictive mechanisms. This could mean having an addictive personality, or a condition that predisposes you to it. For example, there is an association between ADHD and ADHD-like behaviors and porn addiction, as well as OCD. In fact, ADHD is predictive of having a porn addiction, as people with ADHD often hyper-focus and lose control, becoming completely absorbed in using porn without limit as they seek new sensations and types of porn to cure an incurable sense of boredom with the porn they've seen before. It can also mean being psychologically vulnerable, such as mental ill health or loneliness. Depression has, unsurprisingly, been associated with porn addiction. Having an insecure attachment style, especially an anxious attachment style, and having difficulty in close romantic and sexual relationships can also make you more likely to use porn, especially if you also have ADHD. Compulsive use of porn can be used as a temporary escape from negative emotional states. In fact, if you're depressed and porn makes you feel better and escape negative feelings, that is a positive predictor of porn use. The same study as before found that 3-4% of porn users were addicted, and also found that about 30% were at risk of their use becoming problematic but were not addicted. About two-thirds were normal porn enjoyers, neither addicted nor at risk. This 30% group is interesting, but we'll come back to them, and what puts them at risk later. What's the most addictive? Let's go back to what characterizes an addiction. So, cravings, dependence, withdrawal, and impaired control, that type of thing. Sugar appears to be the clear winner. Our ancestors did not evolve with on-tap highly refined sugar and carby foods, and our physical inability to adapt to this is obvious. Almost everyone will experience the impact of sugar on the reward circuitry of their brains, and the fact that we all have to eat every day makes it incredibly hard to avoid sugar, especially in a world where sugar is added to almost everything, including supposedly healthy foods. Low quality food is cheaper, and carbs are king. Just look at the obesity epidemic. More than 39% of adults globally are overweight and more than 13% are obese, and that obesity rate rises to over 40% in the United States, and diabetes and insulin resistance are widespread. If you get ravenously hungry after a couple hours without eating, or you experience a crash if you don't eat, or you're constantly snacking on something, then chances are you're experiencing an addiction to the effect of food on the body and brain, rather than a true nutritional need. That's some food for thought though. It's a bit of a mindset shift to think of the very feeling of hunger not as a true need, but rather a psychological one. But that also means you can take control. Contrast this with porn. 
While porn still has some effect on the brain, and this is still under research, it seems from the scientific literature that the addictive nature of explicit material needs to be potentiated or made worse by having underlying psychological problems and predispositions. While these conditions will also make it more likely you might get addicted to sugar, it seems much more of a factor for porn. You don't need porn to live, and in fact, until the invention of the printing press and the Victorian era invention of photography, only the upper classes had access to erotica in the form of art. We didn't evolve with on-tap, freely available porn, or in fact any explicit material. However, when about 99% of men and almost 90% of women are using porn, but only about 3-4% experience problematic and excessive use of porn, despite so many people using porn who are at risk, it seems that porn must on balance be less addictive than substances like sugar or cocaine. But which is the worst addiction? Sugar or porn? If you have an addictive personality, or ADHD, or underlying psychological problems, or a combination of these, then either way you could be at a much higher risk of both substance addictions, like cocaine or sugar, as well as behaviour addictions like porn, but also gaming or social media. For the vast majority of people, I'm going to say that sugar is overall worse for you, as it combines psychological and neurological impacts with severe metabolic and physical impacts that play out over the long term, including health impacts that will affect both your personal life and relationships. We should all be mindful of how much sugar we are consuming and treat it as a rare treat rather than a regular feature of our diets. There are radical ways to overcome sugar addiction that work. Watch my other videos for more on that. But for those at-risk personality types, once they're addicted, I'm going to say that porn could be worse due to the potential for severe psychological and social impact and an interplay between shame, religion, body insecurities, relationships, and gender biases. More on this controversy and what puts you at risk of porn addiction in another video, linked up here. You have to know yourself, pay attention to how you're using it, and how it makes you feel afterwards. But watch out, you might be surprised to find out that movements like NoFap or semen retention are actually based on lies and cause more damage than good. So, if you're thinking about reducing your porn consumption, you need to watch this next.